The Aaron's one. Oh, shit. Lady Alyssa of the Moon Gates, King John of House Aaron, King John Aaron of the Iron Throne. That's crazy. So the Targaryens lost, but it wasn't even to the uh, the damn Baratheons. Offer to join war. There we go. I have joined the war of the peasant uprising. There will be no revolts in my lands. We will have order. Law and order will have its day. And you will remember that. I am your liege lord. You will fucking listen or I'll hang you for traitors. Nice. And just like that, <laughs> the peasant uprising in the guidelines has been put down. I can declare war on the neck. For Lord Eld uh, Edward's claim. Interesting. Lordship of the Peatlands. The Peatlands. We ride out to meet the bastards, lads. Very nice. Your glory is widely known. Very nice. Nice. A smashing victory right off the bat. Not bad. All right. Let's take our asses to war, lads. Aha. Enemies. Let's move off to war, lads. Oh, no. War declared on leech. Queen Alyssa is being attacked by Lord Paramount Robert. All right. Time to join the rebels, lads. Yeah, I can conquer the whole neck. High lordship of the neck. That's interesting. That will be next, I believe. Oh, Edmure of the Vale. What the fuck? Oh, all of this land is the Vale. What the fuck is happening right now, dude? I'm so lost. Holy shit. Nice. Here come the stocks. Very nice. Oh. More peasants. Dude, they literally just got here. Now they're turning it back around already. The fucking peasant uprisings, dude. That's crazy. The pitch. They're really pissed off, dude. I wonder what's going on. All right, let us continue our assault on the lands of the, uh, of the neck. Commander promoted. My marshal, Lord Carl, has been showing off a promising new recruit. Tiala Icemark. Very nice. Very nice. And now we declare war on, uh, on the Maya. Nice. My Captain Tiala Icemark, our new captain. That's interesting. Oh, and look at that. Defensive negotiations, lads. Can propose one alliance without a marriage. Let's fucking go, lads. What was that sound? Oi. Ambush in the bog. Uh, Tiala Icemark, yes. You've uh, you've trained quite a quite a replacement, it seems, in his uh, in his lifetime. This swampy bloody neck, dude, like Jesus. Ah, oh, no, another assault. Rally the troops, lads. Ah. Oh. Another 580 fucking men. Yeah, these wild men of the neck, dude. Like, crazy. Yeah, ambush in the bog. Dude, a fuck... Another one? Good God, dude. Dude, for fuck's sake. The, the swamps of the neck, they really refuse... These wild men of the neck, they truly do not want to be tamed. Tiala comes of age. I mean, he's a six-year-old and she's 16. There's a 10-year age difference. But they are, they are going to accept a matrilineal marriage as well. So the Iron Islands are going to be inherited by the, uh, the children of uh, Tiala Marshall. Send proposal. You can call your ally Lord Paramount Roderick of the Iron Islands. Yeah, the Godlander Conquest of the High Lordship of the Neck. Call to war. Bring your ass, Roderick. To the handsome Arid. Of course I shall join you in this war. Our foes shall learn to fear the men of the Iron Islands. Sign, Lord Paramount Roderick of the Iron Islands. Excellent. Bring your ass, my friend. There was raiding to be done to the sensible Arid. Oh, yeah, that's the, uh... Very nice. Commander imprisoned. I love that. I'm 34. I started this campaign when I was 16. For God's sake. That's crazy. Yeah, alliance formed with Lord William of the Barrowlands. Dude, look at all the wars I can declare. 28 wars. Why? For what? Oh, I'm invited to the grand melee of, uh, of Barrowton. Time to break some bones, lads. Though I stepped into the ring full of confidence, to my bitter shame, I was eliminated in the early rounds of the melee. What? My betrothed can marry. Very nice. You will be joined with my daughter, Gillian, in holy matrimony.
Greetings, knights and knaves, lords and ladies, tis I, your Lord Commander, and welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 a Game of Thrones uh, playthrough series following Lord Erid of House Marshall, the Lord Paramount of the Godlands. So the past couple of episodes have been uh, quite successful. You guys really seem to enjoy our uh, Game of Thrones content. Uh, so I greatly appreciate all the love and support on our channel so far. And I do hope that I'm still keeping up with some of your other favorite series, namely the uh, our Bannerlord series playing as uh, playing as High King Henry Oliver James of the, uh, the Amber Dawn. But today we will be focusing entirely on our our young man. Not really a young man now, is he? Look at that. I almost forgot that he has a uh, he has an eye patch now. How could I forget, honestly? Now I do want to say that with the uh, the war kind of coming to a uh, a quite a head. Ah, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Why are his hips so wide? Did I make him like that? I feel foolish for that. Anywho, uh, I do believe we should give him some proper northern armor. Northern religious or Norse religious? Ah, I see. Interesting. There we go. Let's get our man some uh, some proper northern knight armor here. Uh, apply changes, uh, and it still says we are wearing our flexible armor, which is perfect. Um, so last episode, uh, we absolutely took a beating trying to take, uh, some of these lands from the, from the neck. So these, uh, these marshlands, these swamps of the neck, man, they're just, they're absolutely untapable. Like, they, they certainly do not want to be tamed right now. I could hold a grand melee, but I don't really want to do that. I could go to war with Driftmark. That's interesting. Go to war against the, uh... Yeah, that's pretty interesting. High Lordship of Driftmark. A young boy is at their head. 11 years old he is. Anyway. I can, in fact, go to war with quite a few people. And I, I genuinely feel like the reason for that is because, look at that. The Dreadfort, the Last Lands... Uh, Edgewood, a lot of these lands are not a part of this war right now, which means technically they are not allied with our, uh, our liege lord, uh, Eddard Stark and his liege lord, King Robert of the Iron Throne. Who are we fighting? King Aegon. Interesting. Who holds King's Landing currently? That's Storm's End. Ah, us Baratheons do. Oh, he has a new wife. Interesting. What happened to Cersei? Queen uh, Malisa of the Iron Throne of House Florence. Yeah, Lady Paramount Cersei died in child's birth. That's a shame. Speaking of dead wives, <laughs> unfortunately, my first wife did in fact uh, die, uh, which is quite, quite sad. So uh, when she died, it popped up that like there was no love lost between us or whatever. And so I kind of want to avoid that because now that my betrothed has... Uh, you know, grown to an age where we can actually be married, because she's 16 now. I am 34 currently. That's not the worst age difference I've seen in a Game of Thrones couple, but still certainly uh, odd, to say the least. So I'm going to start a scheme to romance her. I will declare my love for my new wife. Yeah, romance, declaration of love. The time has come to let my feelings towards Lady Gillian be known. I want her to remember this day for the rest of her life. Uh, interesting. So it gives me the four options. I'd kind of rather... I don't know. Are we the type to really, like, sing or write a love poem? We're kind of hardened men. You know what they say in the Godlands? The only difference between a Godlander and an Ironborn is that our gods are above the water. So uh, let's just go with the gut at the moment. My declaration of love is for Lady Jillian's, eye, Jillian's eyes only. No one else matters. I pour my heart out, page after page, my feelings growing as I finally put them into words. The ink has barely dried as I set out for Jillian's chambers. I great, gently, sorry, I gently place the scroll on her bolster. Will she lay the here tonight dreaming of me? The waiting is unbearable. The thought of rejection makes me sick to my stomach. When her reply arrives, I tear the seal with shaking hands. While I cannot encourage you, Lord Arid, I am most grateful for your kind words. Yours faithfully, Gillian. Gillian won't resist my charms for long. Very nice. Alright, so our scheme to romance our dear wife is underway. Um, I'm still hellbent on trying to conquer the rest of the neck. Uh, I'm not too keen on uh, trying to declare war on the Iron Islands. 
Can I conquer the whole Lordship of Black Tide? I could start going after uh, each of these islands, like, one at a time. Yeah, High Lordship of Pike. Interesting. I could conquer one at a time, essentially. Oh, he's in debt. He is mad in debt. The only issue with that, because somebody already commented, hey, you should try and conquer the Iron Islands. And I would totally be down for that. However, we have a marriage uh, alliance. Because my uh, my daughter and heir, Tiala Marshall, is uh, is marrying his son, Lord Thormor of the Iron Islands. Not, uh, not his heir. His heir is Lord Roderick. So this is the second-born son. But it is a matrilineal marriage. So whatever children they have will be born under the, uh, the name of House Marshall. Which is fine, but I believe that once uh, Tiala takes over as my heir, she can then go after the Iron Islands. Because what's the fun in trying to knock all this shit out right off the bat with the first character anyway? Like, that's the whole point of having lineages and bloodlines and everything like that. So, uh, my uh, thinking, sorry, my thinking is uh, that we're going to continue uh, throughout the rest of Lord Arid's life uh, guarding the, the Godlands and the rest of the North against the Ironborn. Uh, and then once, uh, once our daughter takes over as our heir, she can then go and conquer her, her, uh, claim on the Iron Islands. Or perhaps the generation after that, whatever children they have, uh, will have a claim to the, uh, the Lord Paramountcy of the, uh, the Iron Islands. But for the time being, I do believe that, uh, conquering the Neck will be our best next step. We have quite a bloody road ahead of us. And uh, I know fabricating claims isn't exactly the best nor most honorable option. Uh, actually, before we do that, it would probably be a better idea to see if I can't invite claimants. There we go. Send the herald. See, much better. Now I don't have to fabricate, uh, fabricate claims. Nice. I, I, uh, I just gained additional piety, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we're gonna invite those claimants. What other decisions can we do? Oh, shit. Replace your eye with a gem. For a sum of gold, you can purchase a rare gem from a merchant to use in place of your lost eye. Dude. It's only gonna cost me a hundred. Bring me the finest gem. A ruby, a sapphire, a diamond, an opal. Obsidian. Ah, damn. <gasps> Spessarite, it's amber glow reminds me of fire. Dude. Old Valyrians, the sun, dragonglass, emerald, the ocean, diamond. I'll take it. Sa Sapphire, from the Isle of Tarth, from the Summer Isles. Yeah. Damn, so my, my thing is between obsidian and Spessarite. I kind of want to go with Obsidian, if I'm being honest. Choose Gem. Very cool. Ah, oh, shit. Hold on. It, like, immediately replaced it, too. Let me see this shit. Yeah, look at the man. Look at the fucking man, dude. God damn. Oh, uh, Lord Arid, the Obsidian Eye, the blood father of, uh, of the Godlands. That's fucking beautiful, dude. Uh, I didn't really make any changes, but that's fine. Whatever. Ah, oh, dude, that's fucking awesome. That's so badass. Anywho, lads, let us jump into the uh, the combat once more. I say that as if there's any actual combat to do right off the bat, and there's not currently, uh, which is fine. Call to war. Oh, shit. Uh, to the sensible Arid, I call on you to honor our alliance and join me in the peasant uprising. Signed, Lord William of the Barrelands. Leader Harmond of the Peasant Revolt. Interesting. In the Barrowlands. Uh, of course, my lord. We shall accept swiftly. Ah, okay. So there, there is uh, quite a bit going on. So we're going to keep it paused before I can uh, send my troops. Luckily, we're like right here, though. Allies, enemies. Perfect. Uh, romance, glimmering gold. Sweet Lady Jelaine. Jillian. I always pronounce that wrong. Is it Jillian? Would y'all say Jillian or Jillian? I think it's Jillian. But I, I like pronouncing it a little more like Northern, you know? Jillian. Sweet lady Jillian, I say as I kneel before her. My only desire is to bring you honor and happiness. Pray tell me, how can I prove my love for you? Jillian gives me a long look. 
Lady Ashlyn's necklace is lovely, she says and nods her head in the direction of my vassal, Lady Ashlyn. But it would look even better around my neck. Could I... I don't want to spend money, though, on a special gift. Uh, let me just ask her. If, yeah, of course she gave it to me. She's like, that's fine. Do what you will. All right, let us uh, raise all. I only have 1,500 men-at-arms compared to their 3,500 peasants. So we're going to raise all here. Yeah. Very nice. Raise the, raise the banners, lads. Call the boys to war. It's fucking time. Let's have out these peasant scum, lads. Go on. March off to war, lads. I believe it's just the one army, but it is 3,000 peasants. So, what are y'all doing to make your people so unhappy that 3,000 peasants have risen up against you? Like, the fact that you needed to call upon me to, like, you know, help take care of your issues is just sad. But, an honorable knight would not, uh, you know, turn away from such a, such a request. Anywho, good fight. Let's see if he's gonna end this war now. Yeah. We won the war led by Lord William of the Bowerlands against Harmon Spring. Very nice. Gained locals pacified for 25 years. Very interesting. Alright, disband armies. Send the lads home. Very nice. A nice little uh, peasant uprising to, uh, to put down before breakfast, you know? Not bad, lads. Nice. Alright, so there are no... Uh, enemy factions going on right now, which is fine. Activities, I don't really want to do anything. I don't have a whole lot of gold, anyway. Romance, poetic license. There is no woman lovelier than Lady Gillian. In her presence, my words often fail me. It's that, uh, that northern beauty, for sure. It's the, uh, the bloodline of the Starks, man. I don't know what it is. You can't tell me that Sean Bean, Rob Stark, Jon Snow, like, those are beautiful fucking men, dude. Like, and then you get to, uh, to Arya and Sansa, like, beautiful fucking ladies, dude. The Stark bloodline is, mwah, mwah. Like, as, as a, a beautiful looking obsidian eyed man myself, look at the way she looks up at me in disgust, though. I hate that look. Please, love me, please. Uh, none of the compliments ever do her justice. Perhaps a carefully drafted poem would better capture her virtues. I will write about her noble righteousness. Possible outcomes. Interesting. Charming demeanor. Assertive presence. Oh, man. What is her stats, though? What is she like? She's very just. She's stubborn. She's honest. An astute intellectual, but she has gout as well. Uh, so noble, nobility, probably, charming demeanor, probably. Yeah, let's say charming demeanor. That's fine. I don't know, I, I've been in the same relationship for fucking four years, like, in real life, so I, I don't know <laughs> how to, uh, how to flirt with anybody these days. To the winsome Lord Arid, the joyous bounce in your step is the rock I cling to in stormy seas. My heart yearns to feel the embrace of your love that I may know true joy. You and me, together forever. Signed, Lady Gillian of the Gardlands. She must have liked my poem then, lads. Very nice. Your boy's out here romancing the ladies once again, gentlemen. Let's fucking go. <laughs> not bad. Very not bad. Alright, let's see what's happening. Lord Jory of the Neck. It's about fucking time for Lady Ashlyn of Cyprus Rising. Lady Ashlyn's Realm, Lordship of Boromos. Yeah, Boromos. I'll take it. He only has one ally, Lord Vayan of Coldstream. House Pool, interesting. Uh, we have two allies, Lord Paramount Roderick of the Iron Islands and Lord William of the Barrowlands. So we're going to converge on them from the west, the southwest, and the north. This is going to be absolutely fucking beautiful, lads. Uh, let us declare war. Very nice. You declared war on Jory. Yes, I did. I do feel bad about it, but it is what it is. It also seems like we've won our uh, our liberty war against the uh, the Targaryen host, which is fantastic. Yeah, let me call my allies to war. Call to war. Call to war. Bring your asses, gentlemen. It's fucking time. All right, so we're going after Boromos. So we need to remain mostly in this territory and uh, and try and hold it against the uh, the coming onslaught 
of the uh, the men of the neck, the Krangomen. Is it Krangomen or Kragomen? What am I looking for? Yeah, Kranogmen, Kranigmen. Okay, I see. So the Kranigmen of the neck. All right. So let us summon our troops then. Raise all troops here. Of course, it gives me like seventy fuck. I don't understand. Why does it keep doing this? Can somebody explain that to me, please? Disband. Very nice. To the sensible Arid. Of course I shall join you in this war. Our foes shall learn to fear the men of the Iron Islands. Signed, Lord Paramount Roderick of the Iron Islands. Excellent. Thank you, my friends. Thanks for hanging out. To the sensible Arid. Oh, nice. <clears throat> nice proper northerner uh, voice and everything. To the sensible Arid. Of course I shall join you in this war. Our foes shall learn to fear the men of the Barrowlands. Sign, Lord William of the Barrowlands. Excellent. Thank you for your time, dear friends. Alright, so it seems like, for whatever fucking reason, we're just gonna have 6,000 men in 71 different armies out here charging about. So, that's gonna be fucking weird. I wonder if I can't add them all to one army? Whatever. Go about your day. Yeah, Lord Vayan. Oh, Lady Gillian is... Uh, pregnant. That's amazing. Oh, my wife. Yay. Greeti Greetings, my charming liege. May you live in harmony and contentment. I have been a good vassal to you, but surely you understand that I have subjects of my own too. My current contract is very restrictive. Surely you would see the wisdom in making it more lenient. And besides, you do owe me. Signed, Lady Ashlyn of Cypress Rising. Damn it. So she's gonna use her, uh, her hook to try and get, uh, because, you know, I, I took the necklace for Lady Gillian, so now she's going to use the, the favor that I owe her to uh, to modify her, her vassal contract. Which is fine, but I want to see what it's at now. Okay, so normal, and then her feudal taxes are low. She's going to pay me zero taxes? I think the fuck not, lady. Try again. What if I gave you war sanctioned? Ah, oh, never mind. It's already been modified, so I'm kind of fucked here, but that's all right. So we're going to march off to the uh, the first target on our path for war. Oh, shit damn. I am proud to see my son no longer as a child, but as an adult. A natural administrator from birth, it should surprise no one that Erid had come far in his studies of the management of the realm. Displaying a thorough understanding of the flow of gold and the wanderings of people, he even expresses a remarkable creativity in dealing with these matters. Oh, my boy. I love that. They grow up so fast. My son, Arid. My firstborn son. My second child. You know, because my, my eldest daughter is 18. Married to an 8-year-old. That's not... I mean, that's not terrible. I can't really talk shit because I'm 35 and my spouse is 16. But, whatever, dude. <laughs> I wonder what I could do for him now. I wonder if I can't make him... Yeah. Lord Arid of Mirkwood has been a ruler for over 10 years and can marry on his own. Yeah, so I, I can arrange a spouse for him, or I can let him uh, marry on his own. I'm kind of down to let him marry on his own. Like, it's kind of fine. I don't really care. Can't offer him knighthood. I can claim his title. Sorry, i just like to see, like, what options I can do with some of these uh, these newer people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but that's fine. Yeah, he can he can literally do whatever he wants. Let me try and find him a spouse, though. <laughs> Allison. Lady Arya of uh, Mandalay. Interesting. She's a harbor man. Harbor woman, I suppose. She's a pilgrim. She's very charming, but she's also paranoid. Uh, let's try it. Send proposal. Let's see what they have to say. I wonder if my son's going to give his consent as well. Perhaps they will. Perhaps they won't. Who knows? Yeah, get there, my friends. Yeah, to the charming Arid. I gladly accept your proposal, betrothal proposition. Your son Arid will be betrothed to my sister, Arya. Signed, Lord Benice of White Harbor. Excellent. Thank you, my lord. I appreciate. Oh, I can call on uh, the White Harbors. Hell yeah, dude. Let's fucking go. More allies to join this war. To the charming Arid, of course I shall join you in this war. Our foes shall learn to fear the men of White Harbor. Signed, Lord Benice of White Harbor. Sorry, I like to read all of it aloud. Like, the, it's the whole courtly shit that really got me hooked on Game of Thrones in the first place. Don't get me wrong. The combat was really cool. But it's the medieval courtship that has always been a huge interest of mine. And it's something that I feel is seriously lacking in um, 
in Bannerlord, which is why I'm so fucking hooked on this game right now. So I do apologize, but I'm having a ton of fun. I hope you guys are having a ton of fun because I'm not going to stop, guys. I'm genuinely not going to stop playing this game. <laughs> this is my new obsession. I told you all this. All right, so I've got too many fucking armies here, dude. Like, this is ridiculous. And it won't let me, like, summon all of them. There we go. Or select all of them, I mean. Yeah, select your besieging armies. Where is my largest army? I can't, like, combine them all together. Yes, I can. Let's fucking go, lads. <laughs> I found the button for it, lads. Fuck yeah. All right, let me station besiegers here, and I'll take the rest of my men to travel north and reinforce uh, my allies marching to war. Damn, it's really only going to take 177 men to uh, to take this fortress over the span of four months. Not bad. Not bad. And we're about to uh, finish our scheme. Yeah, the armies are marching off to battle, lads. Oh, no. My allies, get there quickly, you fools. Yeah, there we go. Our Captain Tiala. Oh, no, Daisy of Canville. Oh, damn. Lady Daisy was slain by Warden Alana. Come on, lads. Aw, oh, shit. Hold on, let's get rid of this wall. Romance, intruder! Every time I close my eyes, I, say, I see Lady Gillian's face. Sleep will not come. I cannot wait another moment. Cloaked in shadows, I make my way to the garden outside her living quarters. The sight of Gillian's chamber, chamber window makes my heart stutter. So close and yet so far. But wait, who is that climbing up the tower? The shady figure stops by Gillian's window and unlatches the shutters. Oh no. Uh, my petal? Ew. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Anywho, my, my petal is in danger. I must save her. What the fuck, dude? Romance intruder. The sounds from the struggle above is the greatest motivator I have ever known. Without care for life or limb, I hoist myself through Lady Gillian's window. I feel as if I have plunged into a frozen lake. Gillian is on the floor, the intruder pushing her down, a gleaming blade between them. With a roar, I grab the villain by the collar and throw him into the wall. The rest is a blur. When the danger is over, I turn towards her. Gillian, are you alright? I ask cautiously. As if my words were a spell, she finally unfreezes and throws herself into my arms. Thank the old gods you are here, Erid. I will never let you get into harm's way again. Will happen. Lady Gillian of the North becomes your soulmate, gains ten opinion of you. You lay with Lady Gillian and ends your scheme to romance her. You and Lady Gillian found eternal love after you rescued Lady Gillian from a thief. I love that. Ah, oh, wonderful. And now... I, me and my wife are, like, actually in love, which is fucking perfect. Because, uh, when our first wife died, it was very, like, I don't know, mean, kind of. He was almost like, I don't give a shit. Like, when she died, I was relieved. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, yeah, my, uh, my son is gonna become my Castellan. I love that. He's gonna oversee our realm. I don't want him to fortify defenses, but he can oversee the realm, which is fine. As for my wife... She does not have a whole lot of great, like, stats, if I'm being honest. But it's fine. She's also a child still. Lord Henley was wounded in the battle by one of our captains. No, my counselor Hrothgar. Oh, he died of old age. Tiala Icemark. She's out here getting shit done, lads. But fuck, they had a lot of troops. Look at that. They're, they're fighting us tooth and nail right now. God damn. Knight improved, Lord Lonel. Perfect. Yeah, Tiala Icemark. She's a very competent commander. I love that. Very nice, lads. Anywho, empty council position for my admiral. Uh, Tiala Icemark. Lord Giles of Flint Cliffs. Welcome to the, uh, yeah. Welcome to the council, my friend. Don't muck it up. We can still declare five wars. Looks like on the wildlings, which I'm not, you know, I don't really give a shit about. Uh, L Lady Gwyn of Swalemos. Sure, we can ransom her. That's fine. I want to check this out. So they still have 1,500 survivors, which is uh, honestly not that bad. I don't really give a shit. Uh, my Winter Wolves, we lost 18. My Armored Horsemen, we lost 6. Levies, we lost 1,000 levies. And that's like, those are like peasant troops, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are... 
Those are people that we literally snatched up out of their homes, out of their little hamlet, their little village, and was like, come with me, your lord demands uh, war. Or, your lord is marching to war and he demands your service. And it's, it's so sad. A thousand lives lost, man. A thousand lives. And that's just on our side. They lost 2,600, almost 2,700 lives. Damn, dude. That's tough. Very nice. We're slain by Lord Giles of the Flint Cliffs. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. Uh, let's go to events. Tiala Icemark wounded. Lyman Tidewell. Roderick wounded Lord Gavin. Interesting. Roderick wounded Warden Alana. Uh, Lord Aldrich the Bully. Who's Aldrich? Lord Rob of the Waynot. Interesting. Oh, yeah, and we lost uh, Daisy by Warden Alana. That's alright. Dismiss. Anyway, good first fight. Not bad. There's more armies. Oh, yeah. The uh, the White Harbors. Let's fucking go. Look at that. Allies all around. They're surrounded. Push in on the neck, lads. Look at the Ironborn. Let's fucking go for the first time in fucking centuries. Lord Arid Marshal of the Godlands have united the Iron Islands with the Godlanders. And for the first time in centuries, we march together to war against a common foe. That is fucking beautiful, dude. Ah, oh, amazing. My bad. I got way into that for a moment. Anywho, let's uh, let's try and cut off this army right quick. They're being pursued by the the soldiers of White Harbor. That's fucking beautiful. Ransom accepted. I want to see our military strength. We have almost twenty three thousand troops to our uh, our alliance. That's fucking beautiful, dude. So so the the daughter of uh, House Reed, this guy, or not that guy, I guess. I don't know. She's somebody to someone in this. You know, particular neck of the woods. <laughs> the neck. Get it? <laughs> uh, that was funny. Anywho, lads. Let us continue on with the warfare. Look at these ironborn raiders. Get to raiding, you lazy sea dogs. Oh, no. I gained... I'm wounded? What happened? Cradled by death, as I wait outside the birthing chamber, each minute feels like a lifetime. Gillian's... Gillian's... God damn it. I can never just be happy. I can never just be happy. Gillian's screams have ceased with no infant's cry replace it. To replace it. Something is wrong. I can feel it in my bones. The door opens. The, the midwife's wretched expression confirms all my fears. I'm so very sorry, my lord. Lady Gillian, your son. They are both in the godhood now. Fuck, dude. My child and my wife? God damn it. There goes my claim to the north. But there goes my wife. We literally just became soulmates. What have I done to deserve this? God damn it, dude. And now my alliance is expired. And I have no, like, Stark heirs, you know what I'm saying? We never got the chance to, uh, to create an heir together. Ah, damn. That's sad. Love sweet remembrance. My dear Gillian shuffled off this mort mortal coil. What I would give for just one more day with her. My halls feel empty, and yet I must tarry in this place. Perhaps this sadness will dull with time. I must soldier on without her. Damn, dude, that's fucking tough. That's so sad. Very nice. Battlefield Knighthood. After the battle in Squirrel's Log, uh, Lord William of Draywinds. Uh, nice, he's one of the Barrowlanders. Of course I will knight you. Welcome to the, uh, the Brotherhood of Knights, Sir William. Very nice. Oh look at that! And the uh, the high the the White Harbor troops also joined us in this fight. That's pretty cool. Not bad. They still have quite a number of troops uh, retreating off to the east, but a lot of good that'll do them. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And nine thousand ninety five hundred Ironborn Raiders follow our troops. Look at that! And they're spreading out in all directions, lads. Get out there! Have fucking at them! That's amazing, dude. I can't get over it. All right. 
I'm actually going to push towards their capital uh, with my main force. We're going to see what happens there. They don't have nearly enough men to be able to take us on. And I am out for fucking blood, dude, because my wife, my fucking wife, and I know that the, the, the Kranig men of the neck were not at fault for the loss of my wife, but I got to take it out on somebody, man. I have to take it out on somebody. And we're already at war, so as the saying goes, there is a, there's a beast within every man, and it stirs when you place a sword in his hand. Amplified even more whenever uh, you lose a loved one, for sure. So, regardless of fault and, uh, and righteousness, I will be uh, taking out my frustrations on the, the Kranig men of the neck. Nice. The Freys are also at war, it seems. Interesting. Perhaps a, uh, a land dispute or something of the sort. Oh, they're going after the Maya. Cowards. Yeah, Siege of Greywater Watch. Yeah. Dragonfly Kranig. Really gonna try it, aren't they? Uh, station besieges, and let's send the rest of our troops forward. Moving on, lads. Push forward. Yeah, the Maya's under siege now, lads. Look at that. Look at all these troops. Cut them off. Nice. Another battle ensues. Death to the enemy, lads. For the godlins. Very nice. Ooh. Lady Ashlyn killed Lyman Tidewell. Interesting. Very nice. Your glory is widely known. Very nice. Another knighthood, it seems. Of New Stonehand. Very nice. Oh, he's one of my vassals. Uh, the Battle in the Maya, Master Tomad of New Stonehands. Of course, welcome, Sir Tomad. That's an interesting name. I love that. How long is it going to take, this one? Six years? I think not. Yeah, I think not. Anyway, y'all can move forward. Uh, we need to continue to take uh, Boromos because uh, that is our like first official target. There we go. Send my men off this way. Yeah, they're already moving, so they're going to have to like circle back around. My bad, lads. My bad. I'm just bad at planning things, obviously. Yeah, Commander significantly approved Lord Erid. Lord Erid of Mirkwood gained the trait Flexible Leader. Nice. Very cool. My marshal. La Tiala of Icemark, dude. She is kicking ass as my marshal right now. I love that we uh, promoted her. And she's uh, she's out here increasing the uh, the effectiveness of our commanders and captains. That's fucking beautiful, dude. I still can't get over my wife. Like, that, that one actually hurt. I'm going to ransom this lady. I don't fucking care. <sighs> I wonder if they're going to let me get married again. Because it just says that my spouse is like dead <laughs> fucking sucks dude yeah i don't think it's gonna let me yet I, i've got to go through the grieving period because we weren't just like married married for an for an alliance like we were actually uh soulmates we were in love at least for a time not long enough damn it's still gonna take six years even with my full force here that sucks it's gonna take 11 months well obviously this is gonna take six years this is their main fucking capital obviously shit Dumb. Nice. Look at all these troops moving out. That's fucking lovely. It's a fucking massacre, dude. Look at that. And they're trying to raise more troops in the north. A lot of good it's going to do them. But look at all these allies, man. Fuck yeah, dog. I've been appointed Master of the Hunt by Lord Eddard. I love that. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, they don't have nearly enough men to really go after us right now. Das it. Hello. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. This is going to take seven months. This is on its way. Five years. Five years of a long-ass siege, dude. And the entire time I'm out here just, like, mourning my wife. Dude, that's so fucking sad. My skilled son. My son, Lord Erid, has proven himself highly capable, especially in matters of a diplomatic nature. There are some projects I would like to undertake in the Lordship of Mirkwood, my liege. With your blessing, of course. Yeah, take the reins, Erid. I trust you, my dear son. 
Strategical impasse. I'm sitting around the map table with Lord Edwald and Lord Giles, discussing our strategy for the ongoing war. Edwald bangs his fist on the table and loudly procl proclaims we should charge the enemy directly and crush them with the sheer might of our armies. While Giles sits back and patiently advocates for us to secure critical locations and wait for the enemy to come to us instead. It is my right to, to decide our ultimate course of action. Uh, obviously, let's do both. We gain imp improved defense, improved defense. I love that. What we're lacking in romance, we're making up for in, uh, in our, you know, strength of military might. Wandering Sellsword. A Sellsword by the name of Ian has arrived at my court today, and after first speaking to my marshal, he has come before me seeking employment. Uh, it's only going to cost 20. Fine. Join. Join us. Why not? We're at 60% here for our, uh, our war. Yeah, these guys don't know what to do with themselves. They're like, what do we do now? <laughs> Keep going, lads. There, there's much more to be done. But look at that. We've got all these men here. The Ironborn Raiders. The, uh, the Godlanders. The Mandalays. Yeah, a lot of them are moving in to help out at this, uh, this siege of Greywater Watch. It's the capital of, uh, of the Neck. Ah, yeah. And the Barrowlanders. That's amazing. Yeah, Siege 1, Prisoner Taken, beautiful. Well, we have to simply push forward. Look at our escort of uh, Iron Islanders, dude. That's fucking amazing. Nice, and a battle's uh, ensued up here. Battle of Churchford with a Lord William of the Barrowlands himself. Interesting. Mistress Tiala. Not my Tiala, I don't think. Yeah, no. Internal injuries. Nice. The Manderleys are out here kicking ass right now, man. Glad to have them on our side. He's a 15-year-old. He's literally a boy. He's not even 16 yet. That's crazy. Four years left in that siege. Four months left in this one. I'm going to super speed this shit. Look at him go. Ah, camp dispute. Oh, no. Lord Rob of Forent and Ian Peel. Oh, that's my new guy. Interesting. He's from House Peel. Dare to be devoted. I love that. That's pretty cool. Uh, after my army sets up camp, I hear a commotion coming from the captain's lodgings. Investigating the disturbance, I find Lord Rob and Ian in the middle of a heated argument while several onlookers edge them on. Uh, deliver a speech about unity to the crowd. Possible outcomes. Uh, my words pull everyone away from the fight. I gain 150 prestige, 100 martial lifestyle XP, 20 opinion, 20 opinion, out of respect. Nice. Yeah, you dumb fucks. The fact that you would stand uh, in open sight of your uh, your fellow man, your fellow man-at-arms, and, uh, and sow discord within the ranks um, amongst the two of you is absolute foolishness. There needs to be nothing less than absolute unity as we march off to war together. Otherwise, outside forces can push on those weak points within and crumble us from the inside out. I will not have it. Do you understand me? As your lord, you will follow commands. And you will do so gratefully and with your mouth shut, or I will hang you for an oathbreaker. That was a little, uh, that was a little rough. But look at him, like, he's like, alright, alright, my bad. I'm sorry. I get up and deliver a speech about how we are all fighting for the High Lordship of the Godlands, and how we must stand united against our foes. For if we don't, there are many outsiders who would take the advantage of our internal squabbles to seize our lands and impose our rule, their rule on us. Looking abashed, Lord Rob and Ian apologize and get ready to settle in for the night. We are stronger when we stand together. That's basically exactly what I said. That's crazy. Anywho, let us get a uh, organized march. That'll help with our march speed. God, he still looks so badass. With the scar and the obsidian eye. That's fucking cool, dude. Yeah, I just, uh, I want this damn siege to be done with, man. The one that's taking literal years. Commander promoted. My marshal, Tiala, has been showing off a promising new recruit. She may not be of as noble stock as you, my liege, but on but on my name I swear that Salisa is someone you would want on your side. Very well, Lady Salisa. 
You shall serve me. Welcome to my, uh, to my banners. Uh, Salisa Wolf is her name. That's interesting. Nice. Another Siege one. This one is still three years left, dude. Like, god damn. We're kicking ass, though. 93%. Not bad. All right. That was Cypress Bottom. That one siege just took out the entire, like, Cypress Bottom. That's crazy. All right. Let's send the rest of our forces this way. What I realized we don't have are any fucking uh, siege weapons, dude. Ugh, a fucking fool I am. Why have I done such a thing? I've got two two uh, parties of armored horsemen and two winter wolves, but I have no uh, siege equipment or pikemen. Damn, I'm kind of dumb for that one, but it's all right. We'll roleplay it as uh, we have just a shit ton of fucking knights and shit like that. So, whatever, whatever. Anyway, let's continue on. 96% and climbing. Very nice. It's at 100% now. I feel like we should kind of just do it. How much loot is here? I wonder. Only 22. It's going to take another three years. I don't want to be at war. Especially in this siege for another three years, dude. So, honestly, let's just uh, let's end this, this war. To the sensible Arid. Your wisdom and mercy are legendary. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. Signed, Lord Jory of the Neck. Very nice. Lady Ashlyn gains the contested title and lordship of Boromos. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. All of my glory hound vassals gain ten opinion of me for ten years. Approves of offensive victory. Very nice. So be it. Disband all the armies. Go home. The rest of you lads, thank you for your service and for calling upon the, uh, you know, or for heeding the call, I should say. But uh, your services are no longer needed. So please return home and give your regards. Or give my regards to your lords and your lieges. Thank you. And for the ironborn within my lands. Yeah, disperse. Thank you. Whew. Not bad. So uh, we're not quite... Oh, interesting. Alara Bogborn has a claim on the lordship of Cyprus Bottom. Cool. Does that mean that uh, we can lay claim to it ah oh, his spouse died slain by lord alaric the bully of heapsdown ah interesting one of the barrowmans damn lady ashlyn of the neck she died in uh in the war that's crazy so we must be like really upset but he's also intimidated by us which is cool so our our uh ooh lord howland oh howland reed was slain by prince oberon the red viper that's crazy Anywho, he doesn't have any heirs either. That's fucking it. Oh, yes, he does. What the fuck? Uh, Lord Eddard of Cranbrook. Interesting. Yeah, so he, ha he has... Anywho, that's pretty cool. Not bad. So our war with the uh, the reeds of the neck uh, and the Cranog men of the neck has uh, was a sweeping victory. Thanks to the uh, the alliances we've built with uh, the Barrowlanders, the White Harbormen, and the, uh, the Iron Islanders. That's fucking amazing. So I'm Master of the Hunt for Lord Paramount Eddard the Just. Damn, look at him. He got all fucked up. Uh, wounded. That's quite sad. The Starks. Very nice. Allied to King Robert. Allied to Lord Ve Veon of Coldstream. Through marriage between Lord Benjen and Jerain Poole. And allied to Lord Gareth of the Gap. Whatever. So we've gained quite a bit of income thanks to our uh, our recent uh you know warfare and whatnot so i suppose we could utilize it and let's try and get ourselves uh something i don't know if i want a crown really but we can certainly commission an artifact do we want a weapon though i don't really want a crown regalia i don't really give a shit about let's see if we can't get another weapon why not Inspiration funded. Davin glances down before bowing deeply. It's both an honor... Yeah, he is an older man. It's both an honor and a privilege to forge you a weapon. He speaks in a dignified way, but there's a glimmer of excitement in his eyes that betrays his serious demeanor. Tell me, my lord, what is your preferred way of fighting with a weapon? I wish to forge something that would suit you the best. Slash and pierce, so I could get like a, a sword for that, or like a... 
A dagger or a sword? 50-50. I don't want a dagger, though. Uh, a weapon that makes full use of my strength. So an axe, a hammer, or a mace, or a spear. Let's do strength weapon. Why not? I'm down for that. Nice. Dynasty legacy. Ah, oh, our dynasty can be uh, of the north. The north remembers. Winter pelts. Plus one martial, plus one prowess. Advantage in provinces affected by winter, plus five. Watchers on the wall. Dynasty head interaction sent to the Night's Watch. Ah, so members of my dynasty can be elected Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. That's amazing. Unconquered. Number of captains plus one. Very nice. Builder's blood. And hungry wolves. That's cool, but I, I really want this one because private army can give us a max number of uh, men-at-arms regiments. Yeah, because I don't really care about everything else, really. Uh, but I'm down to go for the north. Like, this is a northerner playthrough, so of course the north remembers shall be our dynasty legacy. And we can hold a grand melee. I don't really want to spend half my money, but... Let's fucking do it. Might as well, right? We've never been able to do it ourselves, and we lost the first uh, grand melee we were a part of. So let's uh, let's start our own. Fuck it. I don't see why not. Very nice. The grand melee of Seagard. There is only one way to determine the greatest fighter. Have the maester send ravens with an invitation for every likely warrior. Very nice. I will only watch the final fights. That's interesting. So Edmure Tully has a claim on both the Vale and the Riverlands. He holds both. High Lordship of Giant's Lance, the Bloody Gate, and the Eerie. I wonder how that happened. Yeah, the Vale. There we go. The Vale kind of all merged with the uh, the Riverlands. That's pretty interesting. That makes him uh, quite a force. 18,000. It's similar to ours, though, which is pretty interesting. Nice. The Grand Melee of Sea God. The lords and champions of the realm have arrived, ready to test their mettle in the melee grounds. The clash of training swords on armor rings out as warriors practice for the coming bouts. There is little of the peasant pageantry of a jousting tournament to be found here. This will be a battle, not a festival. Let us begin, lads. I'm going to super speed through this as well. That way we can get through this melee. Inspiration, a name to remember. My beneficiary, Davin, approaches me with a thoughtful expression. Is there anyone special to you, my lord? He must r read my irritation at such a personal question from my face because he continues, I mean, is there anyone you wish to dedicate your commissioned artifact to? It is turning out well, but a meaningful inscription would make it feel more personal. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, he's going to let me uh, dedicate it to, to my late wife, Jillian. Yeah, in memory of my late wife, Jillian. Oh, so cruel and unfair. That's cool. I'm glad that they let me do that. I'm going to fucking cry, dude. Like, I know she's just my fucking, like, digital wife or whatever. But damn, like, that one hurt. That one really hurt. Anywho, the preliminary rounds have provided the maesters with a steady stream of broken bones to set and gashes to attend to. But the final rounds promise to be even more ferocious. The competitors who remain in contention are among the most deadly fighters in the realm. And, tourney blades or not, there can be no doubt that more blood will be spilled before the champion is crowned. The melee grounds rumble with anticipation as spectators lay their wages and competitors make their boasts. Fortune favors the bold. Very nice. Uh, Lord John and Lord Ebert. John of Grand Chol. Nice. Lord John is triumphant. Oh, that was it. Blade strikes shield as the final battle is joined. And what a battle it proves to be. The stands erupt in cheers as Lord John strikes the final blow, sealing his victory. This grand melee has been a glorious affair, and while Lord John's name will doubtless echo in the minds of small folk and noble alike, my name too will perhaps linger in their memories. It has been a battle for the ages. Very cool. Not bad. Ah, uh, inspiration, creative freedom. This is ridiculous, Daisy protests. As the keeper of the Lord's personal collection, I have a responsibility to ensure the quality of your work. You will see it once it's finished. Davin retorts, you should leave a man to his work when he is forging an axe fit for royalty. 
So, spoiler alert, I guess I'm getting an axe. I don't know. Yeah, so th this one's a little difficult because uh, Daisy will ensure its quality, Davin. Davin. Uh, loses 10 opinion of me. Daisy gains 5 from me. 60% chance that the uh, the weapon is of a higher quality, but 40% chance that it's lower. This one, nothing really happens except for opinion loss, which I don't give a shit about because I'm their lord anyway. Uh, if I tell them to take a breath, he loses, tr she loses 20 opinion of me and becomes a rival for him. Uh, Daisy will be replaced by Davin if I take his, if I do this one. 50% chance of the artifact produced of a slightly higher quality. Well, I want to take this one because it's a 60% chance of a definitely higher quality, not slightly. So Dicey will ensure its quality, Davin. Sorry. Will be of a higher quality. Perfect, see? Daisy improves Davin's work. Fucking perfect, see? No issues at all, guys. Grand Melee of the Dreadfort. You are hereby invited to, gr to a Grand Melee at the Dreadfort. Signed, Lord Domeric of the, gra of the Dreadfort. Nice. Of House Bolton. His father was Roos Bolton. He has five siblings. Two of them are dead, which is sad. Lord Ramsay Snow of the Pale. The Pale? Interesting. Yeah, very cool. He's interesting. He's just patient, compassionate, honest, an adequate bargainer. I like that. Anywho, let us take part in this uh, this new uh, grand melee of the Dreadfort. Very nice. Uh, alongside warriors from across the realm, I intend to make my foes rue the day they stepped in the ring with me. For glory! We'll see if we actually last this time. Frozen love. Oh no. More memories of my, my past wife. It feels only like yesterday that my dear Jillian still walked this earth. Always calm, maintaining eye contact and leaving me yearning for her touch. If only I could have had one more day with her. Though time moves onward, I don't think I will ever marry again. Ah, oh, no! Perhaps I just need more time. I lose the trait widowed, but I gain the trait refusing marriage. I don't know, man. Like, I only have two kids. Damn. Yeah, I will hold her with me. This one was a true love. A true, like, the truest of love that you can, uh, that you can find. And that's unfortunate because we are such a young man, but, uh, to, especially to be, like, widowed at such a young age, you know? 39. But I have two children. My line of succession is secure. The boy is 12. She's 21. Yikes. Yeah, they need to start having children soon. His betrothed is 14. She's 19. That's not bad. And she's a Mandalay, too, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, they and they have claims to Raven Tree still because they're uh they're children of my my first wife. Still, the fact that my children are of a wife that I didn't love and the wife I did love, uh my child died with her. <sighs> that fucking sucks, dude. This is the worst episode I've ever recorded. Very nice. Now it is us and Master Merald of Pronged Port. Oh, he's got a hammer. That's crazy. Low increase, low increase, high increase. Uh, low, medium, none. I'll show you how I heft a sword. Ah, uh, my opponent's god is fierce and I feel far from victory. His stance is formidable, not bad. Rapid thumps and crushing thwacks. Oh man. Yeah, that, that hammer is going to cause us some issues. I have, I have yet to open up my opponent's guard at all and see no way yet to claim victory. Low chance, low chance. Yeah. Let's try this one. Let's see how you do without your hammer. One colossal powerful cleave from my sword is almost enough to wrench Merald's hammer away from him, but he just manages to recover. Master Merald of pronged port, screams my opponent, flailing his hammer furiously at, around, and near me. My form is good with only small errors and Merald's stance is passable. Oh, man. Uh, medium, low, none. I'll show you how I have to sword. Confidence is half of any fight, and I throw out fluidly quick slashes with all the confidence of the seasoned expert. Merald does his best to ward me off, but he's entirely on the defensive, and his guard is only getting weaker and sloppier with each blow. When the opportunity presents itself, I knock his hammer flying with one powerful cleave, and like that, the bout is decided. 
I get my yield before I even entered my backswing. I am victorious. Mmm. Let's fucking go, lads. My body aches. My armor is dented and my breath co comes ragged from my chest. But I stand triumphant, having conquered all challenges and the melee ground. It is difficult to say what is more satisfying. The cheers of the crowd or the beaten look in the eyes of my opponents as they stumble away defeated. My elation only deepens when Lord Domeric presents me with my hard-earned winnings. This day will live long in my memory. Nice. I gain melee winner. Nice. 250 prestige and 75 gold. Not bad, lads. Certainly not bad. Nice. I have about two months left in my, uh, my inspiration project. He's intimidated by us. Because of our lordliness, no doubt. Oh, it's time. Inspiration realized. My lord. My beneficiary, Davin, approaches me with a wide grin. Dr sweat dripping down his forehead and soot smeared across his face. I have toiled over the forge many days and nights, but finally my work is done. He presents me with an object wrapped in cloth, and as I unveil what is hidden within, my eyes grow wide. A battle axe of fine, cr of very fine craftsmanship. The wrought iron head is mounted on an elegant oak haft that has been painted with images of symbols and phrases in dedication to the last hero. Masterwork weapon, Lord Erid's battle axe. Prowess plus three, face, faith hostility advantage plus four. Very nice. A tiny but elegant inscription. Ah, oh, you can't really see it. Hold on. I'll zoom in during editing, but there we go. A tiny but elegant inscription runs on its side, dedicating it in loving memory of Jillian. Dude, that's so fucking heartbreaking. Fuck, this is lovely. Ah, oh, thank you very much. But goddamn, my fucking heart aches, dude. We've got to wait uh, four years until we can try and uh, acquisition another one. Alrighty, lads. So that is all that we have for this episode. It has been a very heartbreaking one for sure. We fell in love and then we lost her, literally just like that. And now we've kind of devoted ourselves to not being married ever, like at all. So it's kind of sad. It is very, very sad. And I, I can't help but feel uh, incredibly empathetic for our made up character. Uh, Lord Erid of House Marshall of the Godlands. Very sad. And so here we are, our final scene of our liege lord. Uh, he is in the temple, the Norse temple, as he uh, he goes and visits his late wife quite often. Uh, even I'd like to think that even his children uh, kind of loved her for the time that she was with them. Uh, especially because they were, she was much younger than them. So I believe, like, I really enjoy the idea that maybe they were all, like, really close. Uh, despite, like, the odd age difference between the lot of them. Uh, but it's super sad. So here he is, super rageful. Uh, and just super fucking upset as he comes to, like, visit the tomb of his wife, his late wife. So very, very sad indeed. But, uh, who knows? Like, genuinely, we might end up, uh you know, finding cause to uh, remarry at some point. If it's an opportunity, I know we have the trait that says that we refuse marriage, but we'll see what happens in this game. You know what I'm saying? Anywho, lads, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please consider dropping a like for me. And if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please leave it in the comment section below. And of course, if you are new to today's channel, I, your Lord Commander, implores you to strike ye old subscribe button and to ring the bell of notification so that you may stay up to date on all of our newest uploads but that's being said and done my loyal godlanders always 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 remember honor and service glory and sacrifice and we are the shields of the west and i your lord commander will see you in the next battle goodbye